Little Brother Tripp's going to carry us to the Lord in prayer tonight. Dear God, I just pray to you right now, Lord, and I just thank you for all the many blessings that you've gave me and my family, Lord. I just want you to lay a hand on the lost, Lord, and just get them on the right path, Lord. Just thank you for all you do for me in Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, they'll know we're Christians. Here we go. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Brother Chuck, we say a prayer for us tonight. Good evening. Good to see y'all here today. And i uh, got something I want to share with you tonight that's, that's kind of been on my heart. And I, I don't know if you've, if you've ever been the person, have you ever lost something? You've lost something? Yeah, I have too. I've, I've lost a lot of things in my life, but I, but I realized that most of the time, the place that I laid it down was where I lost it at. And I always forget because I'm the type of person that I will hide something from somebody and then I'll forget what I, I, where I hid it at and won't even know what I did with things. So let me just share with you this. There's, there's people in this world that's never lost anything. And I want to tell you why they've never lost anything. Because in order for you to lose something, you got to kind of love it first. And I know I want y'all to think about this because uh, because a lot of times you've got to have a love for something, or you would never look for it and you'd never miss it. If you don't care about something, you won't never look for it, would you? You know why? Because it's not on your radar. You're thinking about the next thing. You're thinking about what's next. And I I think about it. This is a reason that that. Jesus, the, the great shepherd, that in the Bible it was talking about that uh, the shepherd left the, the 99 safe sheep and went to find that one that was out wandering around out in the woods. You know, I want y'all to think about that because I was one of those people that, that felt like that I was that lost sheep is out and the Lord, he kept on, kept on convicting me and kept on drawing me to him. You know something, whenever you love something, you, you give. You know, I'm going to read in the scripture in Matthew chapter 7, and this is a scripture that y'all have heard a lot of times before, but I, I got to share it with you because it's what the Lord has given me. In and, and Luke chapter 7, starting with verse 37, I want y'all to, to see that whenever a person loves, they give. And I'm going to tell you about Mary, and, and you know something, I think about this because there's a lot of things that we're going to look at that Mary really loved. And whenever Mary loved something, she loved it enough that she gave it up. 
And the Bible says in Luke chapter, chapter 7, starting with verse 37, it says, Behold, there was a woman in the city which was a sinner. Let me, let me tell you something about Mary. Mary knew that she was a sinner. Mary knew that she needed a Savior. And the Bible goes on to say that she was a sinner and she knew that Jesus was sitting and eating at the Pharisee's house. And she bought an alabaster box of ointment. The first thing I want y'all to know about this is that, is that this alabaster box of ointment, it was something that was very priceful. And it was something that Mary gave, a, a, as we would look at, a whole year's wages for this box of, of ointment. And it was something that was, that was important for her. And, and I want y'all to listen to this as you, as you think about this. And the Bible says that, that in verse 38, it says, And she stood at the feet, at his feet behind and she was weeping, and she began to wipe his feet with his tears. Y'all, I want y'all to think about this because every tear that Mary lost, it was something that she, she was thinking about every bit of a sin, everything that she'd had. She lost something right there, and she wanted to regain that feeling of purity back. She wanted to, she wanted to know what it was like for the things that she was losing to come back to her because her life was so empty at this time. And the Bible says that she began to not only did she have tears that was coming that was on his feet, but also she started to, to wipe them with the hairs of her head. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 11, 15, it says, But if a woman have long hair, it's her glory. So this was something that she didn't want to, to mess up and, uh, and to have it to where it wasn't looking appropriately because she wanted herself to look beautiful. And, but she took that hair and she said, I'm going to lose the way I look and I'm going to lose everything that I've got and I want, to, I want to just lose myself in this moment because at this moment, she wanted to have cleanliness in her life. And the Bible goes on to say that she said, and the Bible says that she kissed his feet and anointed them with this ointment. And I, I think about this a lot because, because at this time in her life, she was... She was willing to lose every bit of her dignity because not only was she in a house with, a, with different people in the Pharisee's house, she was willing to lose her dignity. She was willing to, to lose all of her pride. She was willing to bow down. She was willing to be humble. She was willing to, to show her brokenness. Everything that she had that she could stand for, she was saying, you know, I'm willing to lay it down right now. I'm ready to lose every bit of this to gain just one thing but I want y'all to know she was realizing at this time exactly who she was. There's a lot of people that never realize what they are. There's people that's out in this world that, that, that you know, I think about this. You can look on the news and at any time on the Memphis News, you can look and see that there's a murder just about every day that goes on. Well, these people who are murdering someone, they've, they've lost who they are. And you know what they've done? They've gotten to a point in their life that, that nothing is sacred to them anymore. They don't think about another person's life. The people that steals from people, they don't think about what they've, what they've taken from people. Not only have they taken some of their possessions, but they've also taken that freedom of security, of knowing that no one would come in and hurt them in their own home. There's a lot of things that people don't realize the, what goes on whenever you hurt somebody in this kind of capacity. And the Bible goes on to tell about this because she was realizing that, look, everything I've been before in my life, I, I need to get rid of this. I need to lose myself. And I need to make sure that I'm ready to, to go forward in my life. And listen to what it says, because here comes a point. And I, I, want, I was getting to this point because there's nothing that uh, the Bible talks about uh, a gospers not entering the kingdom of heaven. Y'all know that. The Bible tells about backbiters and hateful people. And, and we're about to see these people that are religious people in, in Jesus' time, but they're a bunch of gospers. They're a bunch of backbiters. And, and the only one that they really love is their self. They're not thinking about anybody else. They was actually, think about this. They was actually seeing the event that was going on. They was seeing that she was weeping, that she was brokenhearted, that was, she was down when all of her tears was coming out of her, out of her eyes. She was, she was hurting and wiping his feet with her. Can y'all, are y'all visually seeing this? And to think about people, every one of us, if we was seeing something like that happening in front of who they were calling the master, 
You know what we would do? We would be, we would be getting down with her. We would be praising Jesus also. We would be humbling ourselves, but not these people, not these people that were spiritual, not these people that were supposed to be the churchgoers, not these people that called themselves the people of, of the Lord and their God. Listen to what they did. This is what they did. Now, when the Pharisees, which had invited him to come, they saw this, they spake within their selves saying, this man, see, the first thing they start doing, they start attacking Jesus because he was letting her do this. They started attacking him, said, this man, if he spake within himself, if this man was a prophet, he would have known what manner of woman this was that was touching him and, and because she's a sinner. See, let me let you know something. Jesus knows exactly what kind of people we are. He knew what kind of woman she was. She knew what kind of woman she was. And the thing about it is, is Jesus allowed her to do that because this was the only way that she could feel like she was getting forgiveness for all the things she did because she acknowledged who Jesus Christ was. There's people that's out in this world that they'll never lose a thing. They'll never lose their pride. They'll never lose their humbleness. They'll never lose. There's a lot of things that they'll never lose, but let me tell you what they won't gain. They'll never gain Jesus Christ. At this time right here, Jesus answered, and I, I, I read this because I think about this often. We get, uh, we've got to get corrected, and we've got to get put in our place sometimes. Jesus stopped. Oh, Simon right there in mid-thought. He was just thinking as he was sitting there in his house and he probably had his hands folded up and he said, if Jesus knew who this woman was, Jesus knew all things. And she knew who she was, but he was just thinking and in his mind. He was about to open up his mouth and he was about to let what was coming out of his mind go into his mouth and Jesus stopped him. And y'all listen to what Jesus did. Jesus answered and said, Simon, I got something to say to you. Can you imagine whenever Jesus stopped? See, Simon hadn't said a word yet, but he was thinking it. I'm sure that Jesus could tell by the way he was looking. He said, Simon, I got something to say to you, and, and I can only imagine how he said this right here. Could you imagine this is kind of what he's like? Well, just say it right on then, Master. He was probably making fun of it because he didn't understand what was going on right there in his own home. He didn't understand the forgiveness of sin. He didn't understand the cleanliness that only Jesus Christ could give him. And Jesus said this right here. There was a certain creditor that had two debtors. One he gave 500 pence and the other uh, 50. And whenever they had nothing to pay, he forgave both of them. Now tell me which one of them that, he, that loved him the most. Simon answered and said, I suppose he who you've forgiven the most. And he said, thou rightly judged. Then he turned to this woman. See, I want y'all to see there's times in our life that we've got to stand up for people who are going through hard times. Jesus did. I, I think about it whenever Jesus was walking down the road to Jerusalem and people was coming to him and he was healing them left and right. He was taking care of them. You know why? Because he could. See, there's times in our life that we can help people just because we can. And we can take up for people and we can love on people. Jesus said right here, he said, see if this woman had entered into your house. See, she, didn't, she entered into your house and she came. Matter of fact, she came uninvited because she heard about the Messiah being in his house. So she said, I'm going in there because I want to get clean. And so she came into his house. He said, I entered into your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman had anointed my feet with this ointment. Listen to what, she, what he's about to say here. He said, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many. I'm going to stop right there. He acknowledged, Jesus acknowledged that he knew everything about this woman. Just like that woman at the well that he told everything about her. Just like you and me. Jesus knows everything about you and me. So there's nothing that we can get by and there's nothing that we can get over on Jesus. Matter of fact, I could stand up here and lie to you all day and you wouldn't know if I was lying, but he knows. Matter of fact, you can lie every day and nobody's going to know it, but he knows. 
You can steal. You can, you can abuse people. You can gossip about people. You can do anything you want to, and nobody around you may not know, but my Lord knows. And he said this right here. He said, her sins, they are many and are forgiven. Listen to this. For she loved much. But to, for, to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth. Let me, let me share something about you and about me. We've been forgiven much. And what makes us love the Lord even more and more and more is because He's still forgiving us. He's still cleansing us. He's still, he's still changing our life. And it's a daily event. It's not something that, that the Lord's saved us and all of a sudden that we're, we're changed for the rest of our life. No, He's constantly changing us. He's constantly convicting us. I sit here and I think about these young girls that's over here right now. And, they, and right now, they don't have the sin in their life. Tripp that was up there praying, they don't have the sin in their life that, that they're going to have one of these days. And whenever the Lord saves them, He cleanses them. But let me tell you something. You're going to have to continually get cleansed by the Lord. And all you've got to do is say, Lord, help me. But this woman right here, she said, I'm taking it further because He knows that my sins are many. I don't know what your sins are. But I'm going to tell you, every one of them can be cleansed just by asking the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Whenever I read these scriptures, it makes me think, you know, uh, her sin was something that she loved. You ever thought about that? Every one of us, we love our sin. If we didn't love our sin, you know what we'd do? We wouldn't do them. She loved every one of those sins until she came in contact with the person who could forgive her of them. See, there's a lot of us that we, we hold on to sin. Matter of fact, we hold on to past sin that we used to do and we allow that to keep us from serving God today. There's people, there's people who God has given them talents to sing and to teach and to preach the word of God and to, and to just be a mentor to people because of their circumstance they've went through and they, and they never do anything because they're still living in their past sin and they're not going forward. See, I, I was thinking about this, this woman right here because the first thing she did is whenever she got done, she went to the town and started telling everybody about things that happened to her. You know something, we need to be telling people about what's happened to us, about what's changed us, about what's made us brand new. But whenever Jesus Christ forgive her, I want, I want to read these last two scriptures and I want you to see this. Verse 48. He, he said unto her, See, the one thing I want you to realize is Jesus took care of that Pharisee pretty quick. He put him in his place. He let him know that he knew what was going on. He let him know that you didn't handle your situation the way you're supposed to. He let him know without having to say you're a hypocrite. He let him know that you're a hypocrite and you did not live the way you were supposed to. You didn't even welcome me into your house the way you were supposed to. Y'all, there's people who does not welcome Jesus Christ into their home today like they're supposed to. We're supposed to freely welcome Jesus into our home. We're supposed to welcome him into our worship center. We're supposed to welcome him into our job. We're supposed to welcome him into our life. But there's people who still live in the old way like they used to and they're living their sin out day by day and never get forgiveness. So I, I want to tell you about this woman. She got clean. The Bible says, and he said unto her, and I can just see it right now, a woman broken, down on her hands and knees, down on her face, right there in front of Jesus. I can see him reaching down there and helping her up and say, come on and stand. There's a lot of us. There's a lot of us that never stand up. That old song that we sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus, do we really mean that? See, this woman, she stood up and Jesus told her, listen to what he said. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this man that forgives sin? These people that was religious people missed the Savior of the world right then. And they said, who is this person? They sat they right there at that table and they watched this woman get up and be clean and be, be, be purified before God. They sat there and watched everything that was going on at this time and they missed it all. 
See, what ends up happening to us, if we're not careful, we'll see God working in our families, working in our our spiritual walk, and we'll miss every bit of it if we're not careful because we're so worried about our own ways and our own agendas, our own things. And listen to what he said. And he said to this woman, Thy faith, see, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. See, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Whenever we lose our sin, there's some good stuff that comes with it. Then we find a way to love the Lord. There's time for us to lose some things. And, and then whenever we can lose some things, we can lose our past. We can lose our... But, but listen, your past is what makes your testimony present right now. God allowed you to go through what you went through so He can use you today. But I'm going to tell you, in order for you to go in peace... We've got to get cleansing for our heart today. Every single one of us. None of us are beyond getting our hearts clean. But this one thing, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. I ask you all tonight, whenever you go home, are you going to go in peace? Are you going to leave out of here and say, you know something, I I felt it tonight. I understood what that woman was going through because I have things in my life that I need to say, God, I need forgiveness over. But I'm going to tell you, once the Lord Jesus Christ forgives you of those sins, why do we pick them back up? Why do we drag them around with us just like their old ball and chain and we drag those sins around and every once in a while we feel like the devil grabs a hold of that chain and says, don't forget they're back here. Don't forget this sin is back here. Don't forget you need to go back into your old life every once in a while and rehash this out. Now I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ told this woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. It's time for us to set everything aside and leave in peace and have that cleansingness. But we've got to come to the Lord Jesus just like that woman did. Humble seeking the Lord Jesus in her life. So many times we don't do that. You know, we're bold, we're strong. Well, I can handle this on my own. She could have probably got up and went in her life just like she was. And she could have, she could have said, you know something, I realize I'm that one lost sheep that's lost. But see, Jesus loves us enough not to leave us where we're at. He wants to bring us back into the fold. But you've got to want it. You've got to have that faith that the Bible's talking about. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that we're humbled. Lord, I pray that you grow us. Lord, I pray that we love enough to lose ourselves so we can, we can just experience you. God, I pray that, that every day of our life that we, we love you, we serve you. God, that we get, we get stronger. And so, Lord, I, I pray that that as we leave here tonight, Lord, that we go in peace. I pray that we leave all of our issues at Jesus' feet, all of our cares, all of our problems, all of our sins, all of our past, and we say, Lord, here it is. I want to get up and leave here clean. Lord, I just pray that you have your hand on every person that listens to your spirit speak to them, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Love y'all.